Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today we are here for my favorite video of the month and that is book of the month predictions. We're going to be talking about November 2023 and let me just say there are so many books coming out in November. It is ridiculous. When I was trying to separate what books I thought book of the month would pick, what books Aardvark would pick, what books I would talk about in my new release videos. I just, there's so many, I was going crazy trying to like split them all up. So because of that, this video might be just slightly longer than usual. I typically try to average about three selections per genre, although sometimes that breaks down a little bit different. This month, however, you will see that several of the genres have four to five selections, and that's just because there's so many good books coming out. So let's go ahead and just get straight into it. We're going to start with the horror, thrillers, and mystery genre. My first selection is The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. This currently has a 4.05 and about 580 reviews on Goodreads so far. This is book number two in the Molly the Maid series, and the first book in this series was actually already featured by Book of the Month, so I think it's likely that Book of the Month will feature book number two as well. Molly Gray is a maid at the Five Star Regency Hotel. She has a flair for cleaning and proper etiquette. As her life reaches a state of perfection, everything is flipped upside down when world-renowned mystery author J.D. Grimthorpe drops dead in the hotel. When it becomes clear that it was murder, Molly knows that she holds the key to solving the case. So like I said, book one in the series was already featured by Book of the Month, and I think it was a pretty well-loved selection. I remember seeing it around quite a bit on social media. I imagine that Book of the Month will pick this one up as well. I don't know if it'll be a main selection or if it'll be an add-on, but I would expect to see it as one or the other. My second selection is The Butterfly Collector by Tia Cooper. This currently has a 3.91 and about 852 ratings on Goodreads so far. 1868 Morpeth. Theodora Breckenridge is mourning the loss of her parents and brother, and in her mourning, she is more interested in secluding herself to work on her art than she is in finding a husband. She seeks to emulate the Scott sisters, both of whom are prestigious nature illustrators. After discovering a new type of butterfly in Australia, her discovery is poised to put her on the scientific map. Then her mate Claire's newborn son goes missing and everything changes. So I've selected this book because I think that it has a nice balance of historical fiction and mystery. We have the missing child, but we also have that element of like a woman wanting to make her own way, not just get married. We have the scientific discovery element of it, the art element of it. I think there's a lot going on. I think the story is also told in dual timelines. One in like a more modern time where there's an investigation going on into the disappearance of the child and one in the past, which is gonna feature Theodora's story. I know that book of the month tends to really like those dual timelines with the reflections on the past. And I think that this could be a smart selection. Then we have The Manor House by Jillian McMillan. This currently has a 3.95 and about 700 ratings on Goodreads so far. Nicole and Tom, childhood sweethearts, are a normal couple until a watery wind changes their life overnight. Soon they've moved into a custom built glass barn on a manor property. They're driving fancy cars, pursuing exclusive hobbies, and living the lavish, extravagant lifestyle. But then Tom is found dead in the swimming pool and Nicole's life goes from a dream to a nightmare. She feels lonely and isolated, but she's definitely not alone. There's the young couple living in the manor, a middle-aged housekeeper, and an old friend of Tom's who's shown up to help her through her grief. Big money brings big problems, and Nicole is beginning to feel them. I selected this book because Macmillan has been previously featured by Book of the Month. That would make her a repeat author. And we know that around this time of year, Book of the Month always likes to feature thrillers and like mystery and horror. So this has very much those spooky Halloween vibes. I think that that would be a great selection for like those cold fall nights. And my fourth selection for this genre is The Reformatory by Tanana Reeve Du. This currently has a 4.51 and 122 ratings on Goodreads so far. June 1950, Gracetown, Florida. 12 year old Robbie Stevens Jr. is sentenced to six months at a reformatory called Gracetown School for Boys for protecting his sister from the advances of the son of a wealthy landowner. He has a talent for seeing ghosts, and what was a comfort after the passing of his mother has become a window into the truth of the Jim Crow era reformatory. While Gloria fights to get him released, Robbie learns to survive from friends Redbone and Blue. I selected this book because Dew is a pretty well-known author, and I like that this is a mix of historical fiction and psychological horror. This covers a very important part of American history. There was definitely reformatory schools 
in the Jim Crow era where students were tortured and brutalized. And so I think that this is shining a light on that. I think this is also the perfect type of book for the fall because you have that element of horror. And when, you know, the sun is going down late and it's like a dark, cold fall night, it just makes everything feel so much creepier. And I think since this is based on reality, can't get much more terrifying than that. Next up is the historical fiction genre. We have quite a few selections in this category as well. First, we have The Porcelain Maker by Sarah Freezy. This currently has a 4.37 and about 246 ratings on Goodreads so far. Germany, 1929. Max, a Jewish architect, and Bettina, a celebrated German avant-garde artist, have fallen in love, but the rising Nazi power threatens them. When Max is arrested and sent to Dachau, only his porcelain making abilities save him. Everything that Bettina has done has been meticulously planned to save Max, but she has a difficult choice to make. America, 1993. Bettina's daughter Clara embarks on a journey across the world to find the identity of the father that her mother has always kept a secret from her. And it's a secret she doesn't understand. So I've selected this book because it is a debut novel. I think that we have the historical fiction element in the World War II era, which is really popular. But we also have a young girl that is looking into her own past to try and find her father's identity, to learn about her history and her roots. And I think that that can be a very popular theme with Book of the Month as well. Then we have We Must Not Think of Ourselves by Laura Grodstein. This currently has a 4.16 and about 58 ratings on Goodreads so far. November, 1940. Adam Parkow becomes a prisoner in the Warsaw Ghetto. Weeks later, he is approached by a mysterious figure with a surprising offer. Will he join a secret group of archivists that are working to protect what is happening and the memories of the people in the ghetto? Adam begins interviewing students, neighbors, and friends to create a portrait of endurance in a world where there are no good choices. So I selected this book because it is a World War II historical fiction, which is always pretty popular, but I like that it is telling the story about archiving and preserving stories. I think that that's super important and I think that theme would be really interesting for book of the month. This book is getting really good feedback so far and I could see it doing really well as a book of the month pick. Then we have The Berry Pickers by Amanda Peters. This currently has a 4.36 and about 1,281 reviews so far. 1962, Maine. A Ma'ikmak family from Nova Scotia arrives in Maine to pick blueberries for the season. Weeks later, four-year-old Ruthie, the family's youngest, goes missing. Last seen by her brother Joe, he will remain distraught by her disappearance for years to come. In Maine, a young girl named Norma grows up as an only child. She is troubled by recurrent dreams and visions that seem like memories. As she ages, she comes to realize that there is something that her parents haven't told her. So this book technically drops on the 31st of October, but it's like right on the borderline. This is a debut novel. It has a really interesting theme. I love that it talks about indigenous culture from Canada. And um, I think that element of mystery, historical fiction, all of that comes together really well to make a really interesting read. I would love to see Book of the Month feature this. Next up is the romance genre. My first romance selection is The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. This currently has a 4.34 and about 808 ratings on Goodreads so far. At 26 years old, Lucy Young is tired. She's tired of fetching coffee for TV producers, going on disastrous dates, and living in a damp flat with a bunch of roommates. After another horrible date, she's walking home when it starts to rain, so she steps into a shop to take shelter for a few moments. In the shop, she finds a wishing machine and she makes a wish to skip to the good part of her life. When she wakes the next morning, she finds a handsome man in her bed, a ring on her finger, a beautiful baby boy and girl, and a high-powered job. As she begins to accept her new life, she'll ask herself if she can go back and if she even wants to. So Sophie Cousins has been featured once previously by Book of the Month. I believe that her selection was pretty popular and I could see this one being a selection since she's a repeat author. This seems like a pretty popular theme exploring like time traveling and skipping to the good part of life or skipping back to parts and redoing things. Um, I've seen them feature this type of scenario before so I could see this one being a selection. Then we have Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This currently has a 4.31 and about 1,332 reviews on Goodreads so far. Mallory Greenleaf is done with chess after the sport led to the destruction of her family four years earlier. She begrudgingly agrees to play one last charity event and inadvertently wipes the board with infamous king killer Nolan Sawyer, current world champion and the bad boy of chess. The wind shocks everyone and launches Mallory into a world of sorely needed cash prizes. As she rockets up the ranks, she struggles to keep her family safely separated from the chess world. 
So I've selected this book because Allie Hazelwood would be a repeat author. She's been previously selected as a main selection for several books. I believe one of her books won Book of the Year, and her last book was added as an add-on even though it wasn't a main selection. So they pretty much feature everything that she writes at this point. I think that one difference with this book and her other books is that this is going to be her young adult debut, and so I think that that gives Book of the Month even just a little bit more incentive to feature it since it's a switch from adult to young adult. I think that Allie Hazelwood's books always seem to be really popular and I could easily see Book of the Month featuring this as a main book or as an add-on. And my third selection for the romance genre is Next Door Nemesis by Alexa Martin. This currently has a 4.13 and about 56 ratings on Goodreads so far. High school rivals Collins and Nathaniel have ended up living in the same homeowners association. After a complaint arrives, they each decide to run to be the president of the HOA. From secret board meetings to vicious smear campaigns, they both sink lower and lower to beat each other. But slowly, that hate begins to turn into lust. So I've selected this book because Martin seems to be a fairly well-known romance author. This book has that enemies to lovers vibe going on and that seems to be wildly popular with the book of the month audience. Uh, I think that this might be an add-on. I, I could maybe see it as a main pick but with the other two romance books coming out I think that this one is more likely to be an add-on selection. Next up we have the contemporary fiction and literary fiction genre. First up we have A Nearby Country Called Love by Solar Abdo. This has a four stars and three ratings on Goodreads so far. In the alleyways of the Zamzam neighborhood of Tehran, a woman lights herself on fire in an act of desperate defiance. Haunted by the woman's death, Issa is forced to confront the contradiction in his own family history. He finds himself thrown into a circle of people all living on the margins of society. As the city explodes around him, he finds that little acts of kindness are the things that matter the most. So I've selected this book because I think it sounds incredibly good. I love the setting of Tehran. I love the idea of this woman's protest and the way that it's going to set off all of this action within this individual character and within the city around her. I think that it's very timely and relevant considering some of the things that are going on in the Middle East right now. I could see this being a really powerful selection for Book of the Month. Then we have The New Naturals by Gabriel Bump. This currently has a four star rating and about 17 reviews on Goodreads so far. Though it doesn't look like much, an abandoned restaurant on a hill on the side of a highway in Western Massachusetts becomes a safe haven to Rio, a young black woman who is bereft after the loss of her newborn. She convinces her husband to help her take this restaurant and create an underground society with it. Slowly, people make their way to the new society, but what happens if this society fails? I've selected this book because Bump is a pretty popular writer. His previous book was well received and this one sounds super interesting. I love the idea of trying to create a new society with a new structure and that idea of what happens to all these people if this doesn't work out. I could see this being a really good selection for book of the month. Then we have The Vulnerables by Sigrid Nunez. This currently has a 4.24 and about 58 ratings on Goodreads so far. This book follows an adrift member of Gen Z and a spirited parrot named Eureka. It reveals what happens when strangers are willing to reveal their hearts to each other and how far even small acts of kindness can go to ease another person's distress. So I've selected this book because it seems like it's receiving a lot of really positive hype. It's been on a lot of like most anticipated release lists. I've seen a lot of reviews of it popping up, a lot of book critics talking about it, and I just feel like this has the vibe that it will probably be selected by a book club. I would like to see Book of the Month pick it up, but honestly I also wouldn't be surprised to see Aardvark pick it up. Either way, I definitely think one of these book boxes should be featuring this one. And finally, for the fiction category, we have A Grandmother Begins the Story by Michelle Porter. This currently has a 4.02 and 221 ratings on Goodreads so far. This book follows five generations of Matisse women and the land and bison that surround them. Carter is a young, recently separated mom. Allie, Carter's mom, is trying to protect her from the hurt that she's experienced herself. Lucy wants a granddaughter that she's never met to help her join her ancestors in the afterlife. Genevieve is determined to conquer the fire inside before the demons burn her up. And Mame, in the afterlife, has to figure out how to cut the final threads that are still tying her to the living. I've selected this book because it is a fiction debut by this author. Porter has previously released nonfiction books and prose but this is her first time dipping her toes into fiction, and I love that she's starting with a multi-generational epic saga. I think that this sounds super interesting. I love that it's gonna talk about indigenous culture and indigenous beliefs. I love that we follow five different generations of women. I think that this would be a smart pick for Book of the Month. 
Then we have our sci-fi and fantasy genre. First up, we have The Future by Naomi Alderman. This currently has a 3.99 and about 361 ratings on Goodreads so far. The future is a few billionaires leading the world to destruction while safeguarding their own survival. Private weather, technological prophecy, and highly deniable weapons. The future is a handful of friends hatching a daring plan. It could be the greatest heist ever or the cataclysmic end to civilization. So I've selected this book because Naomi Alderman was previously featured for her book, The Power, my book of the month. And that was wildly popular. This is a book that has been pretty well received overall. I could see them easily featuring this one. It's been a while since they featured a really good like sci-fi dystopian. So I think that this would be a smart one for them to pick. And my second sci-fi fantasy pick is The Kingdom of Sweets by Erica Johansson. This currently has a 3.99 and 78 ratings on Goodreads so far. Natasha and Clara are light and dark, a prophecy bestowed on them by their godfather, the mysterious sorcerer Drosselmeyer. Clara grows into beauty while Natasha is cursed to live in her shadow forever. One faithful Christmas Eve, Drosselmeyer brings home a nutcracker, which offers Natasha entry to the Kingdom of Sweets. So I've selected this book because it is a Nutcracker retelling and Book of the Month occasionally likes to feature retellings. I think that this one is unique because it covers the Nutcracker, which I haven't really seen done before for a Book of the Month book. It's also Erica Johansson who wrote the Tearling series, which is pretty well loved. And I could see them featuring this one because it kind of has those holiday vibes, you know, that are perfect for November and then going into December. I don't know if I see this as a main pick, but possibly as an add-on. And finally, we're going to talk about nonfiction and memoirs. We have two selections in this genre this month. First up, I have Among the Bros by Max Marshall. This currently has a 4.30 and about 23 ratings on Goodreads so far. 2018 at the College of Charleston. Max Marshall arrives hoping to investigate a fraternity for a small Xanax trafficking rig. Instead, he finds a homicide, several student deaths, and millions of dollars circulating around the deep south. I've selected this book because it is a debut novel. It is the true crime genre, which seems to do really well with Book of the Month. And it's about a really interesting topic. We have a fraternity that is somehow really involved in narcotics and there's deaths and things that are tangled up with this. I think that this could be a really interesting pick. I don't know if this is the number one pick for Book of the Month for a memoir, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see it. My second selection for the memoir genre is Class by Stephanie Land. This currently has a 3.81 and 171 ratings on Goodreads so far. Land finishes college and begins pursuing her writing career, facing barriers at every turn. She's stuck in a Byzantine loan system. She doesn't have enough money for food and she must navigate the judgment of professors and students who don't understand the demands of attending college while also living under the poverty line. So I've selected this book because Land's previous memoir was featured by Book of the Month and received pretty good critical acclaim. This book picks up where Land's previous memoir left off and I could see that Book of the Month might feature this one as well. I don't think it would be a bad selection at all. So those are all of the selections I have for November 2023 Book of the Month. I hope that you found this video interesting and I hope that you've maybe learned about some new books or you know, added a few of them to your TBR. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and let me know in the comments below, what do you think Book of the Month is gonna pick? Do you think that any of these selections are right? Which ones would you love to see featured? Which ones would you not want to see featured? Um, do you think that there are any books that are coming out that I missed that you think Book of the Month absolutely should pick up? And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining, bye.